Hey guys, how y'all doing? It's about 3 p.m. right on the dot. My name is Pierre Walters. You're watching the very first Blue Artist live cast in this format. Usually we do it uh, over, you know, pretty much the phone or over GarageBand or something as a podcast, and you can listen to this on iTunes. But today we're trying something different. If you don't know, uh, Google just has made some major enhancements to their Hangouts, and uh, now you have the ability to broadcast your Hangouts, which is what we're doing, live on YouTube and on uh, on Google+. Plus. So this is really, really exciting, and it allows us to actually meet live on air with the people that we want to talk to and get these, get sort of instant feedback from you about what questions you might want to hear answered, uh, where you'd like to see the conversation go. Um, but what's really neat about it is it allows us to have something on YouTube for these live casts as well as on iTunes. So if you're listening to this on iTunes, it's because it's already aired and the audio has been taken and placed onto iTunes for you to download if you're subscribed. So this is really, really cool, and I think this is going to be a, a, an exciting way to move forward as we, move, as we continue to meet great people uh, and just sort of dive into what's going on in the world of artists, what's going on in the world of entrepreneurs, people who are moving and shaking and just... I mean, making me feel like, hey, man, I got to step my game up. So uh, today, I'm really in enthusiastic. I'm really excited because I get to introduce you guys to a fantastic guy. This guy's name is, his name is Michael Rikushi, and he is involved with some, like, incredible, uh, um, I don't know what, how to call it, like, I guess research, some incredible developments in the world of music. Now, he's an entrepreneur. He is a filmmaker, he is a, uh, a, a, a producer, he is a musician, and uh, we actually met on Twitter, and uh, we went out to eat at a, uh, at a, I think at Panera Bread, and we just sort of hit it off, and, and, and the thing about it, that I like about this guy is that he's got this purple jacket that he wears, which uh, is sort of like his signature. So if you ever meet him in real life, you'll, you'll see him in a purple jacket, and you'll know that that's... That's Michael. This is the same. So, without any further ado, Michael, how you doing? Great, Pierre. Thank you so much for having me. If the uh, if it wasn't so hot where I'm at right now, I'm actually I have the purple jacket with me, but but I started sweating, and that's a whole other issue. So I didn't want to do that on this uh, this first broadcast of yours in this format. Uh, thank you very much for thinking of us <laughs> in advance. <laughs> So, Michael, you are involved with some incredible stuff. I mean, you really are. I've checked out your website. We've talked quite extensively to this point. Um, I want to sort of dive right into j just understanding more about uh, Terra Rising, which is the name of your, your, your production company. Could you just mm -hmm. tell me what is that and, and what is it about? Well, Terra Rising is about trying to capture what is awesome about the essence of everything that is music and the arts and not just one facet of it. We think of labels and we think of production companies and a lot of connotations come up. A lot of different ideas or, or specific stereotypes come up and I, I wanted to start something that celebrates and harnesses the energy of all of those different things. You know, for instance, with music, music healing, music entertaining, music educating, music growing. These are all different facets of music that I think, you know, um, production companies, entertainment companies, corporations, small businesses, everybody can, can sort of get around. So I wanted to start to design projects associated specifically with discovering what some of this stuff was. You, we've heard, for instance, that music heals, but what does that mean? You know, what, what are these things that we talk about when we, it's great when we say them or we put them as hashtags, but what does it really mean? So I wanted to use terrorizing as an entertainment vehicle, as a vehicle for education, and as a vehicle to, to say even with the name, I, it doesn't matter how you sing or how you look or what you do or, or anything, art, um, dance, theater, music, these are all ways that we can connect and they're all indigenous to ourselves and our culture. So terrorizing, earth rising, is all about the embrace of the tools around us, the arts, music, and, and being able to explode those into humanity and in a vibrant and really fun way. Wow, that, that's so eloquently put. I gotta tell you, and I like to speak totally uh, <laughs> frank as much as I possibly can, and uh, I'm so glad that you explained Terra Rising, Earth Rising, because if you say it really fast, it sounds like Terra Rising. And it's <laughs> well, and, 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 and there is, there is that, that's true, and it's specifically designed that way because um, 
we hear that word so much. When I, when I founded the company, that, that is where, you know, you hear these terms terrorism, terrorizing in the news. And I think a lot of us are coming to the realization or, or becoming awake to the fact of what does that really mean? You know, who, what, what are, are we calling that? We're using all of these broad terms to define really complex relationships and stuff. So I wanted to have some fun and say, no, don't just read it terrorizing and think negatively. Look at it a little bit deeper and look at it a little bit closer. Just take, a, just take an extra second. To read something quicker or to re repeat something, it doesn't take that much extra time, but absorb what that actually means and then rather the, the descriptive adjective of this is terrorizing or, or something like that, we have the, the verb of terrorizing, earth rising, something empowering and something that we can all be a part of and do. Wow. It, that it's in, not only is it insightful, but it's 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 very unique. It's innovative. Um, you're you're really onto something with this. And I want to ask you more about music therapy now. I want to sort of figure out what is this idea of music therapy, and what got you so uh, so passionate about this subject. So so let's unpack that. So first, what is music therapy? Well, music therapy is something that's designed by, um, well, well, music therapy, I want to I go back in, into history because what it is, it has always been. It's just the re realization of how we're accepting it publicly. Okay. Um, we can go back through the history of time and see how music's been used and interpreted through Greek philosophy with Plato, how he talked about it with emotions. We can go a little bit further back into Hinduism and the creation of their universe through Brahma and the sound Om actually being what created all of the different things around us to a very large group of people that, that believe in that and, and have that as their, as their culture. Um, the, the Bible has stories of, of uh, I believe, David healing Saul with uh, the harp. And, and there have just been all of these instances. So just recently, in the last two centuries, um, they've been using it a lot in hospitals and um, and, and uh, for soldiers and, and just mm -hmm. different people involved with wars. And so what it actually is, and I definitely want to encourage everybody to go to musictherapy.org, which is the American okay. Music Therapy Association, so you guys can really get the specifics of this and know it from the professionals. Okay. But from a very basic standpoint, so we can all understand it, it it's music being used to achieve goals in in a musical environment that are going to be used outside of that environment and and to simplify that even more for a patient that has that ha is nonverbal there's many different types of conditions children on the autistic spectrum and many others that that are nonverbal so they use singing as a mechanism to use the rhythms and patterns that will be associated with speaking it's just that music brings out those parts of their brain that allow them to communicate and and, and with autism i believe it's very oriented in the prefrontal cortex, so those parts of the brain are unlocked through these relationships built musically between the therapist and, and the client. But once the client leaves that room or wherever whatever setting they're in, they can then speak without, and, and they can then show the, the improvement and, and the goals as they go through their treatment without the need for that therapist to be there, and it certainly reinforces it, and they work on new goals, and they go through the treatment process but it's something that can be taken outside after they're done, the same as any other type of medicine. And, and these people are really finding true healing. So it's not about necessarily feeling good. For patients that suffer from depression, a lot of it's about that. But it's, it's really specific to the patient itself. You can't just flip on a song that sounds good to you and expect everybody to like it. That's where a lot of the misconception comes from, especially with people that just play for hospitals and things they don't realize that the music itself might not be good for everybody. And it's important that if the music isn't good, that a music therapist is there to make sure something can be done and that something can be achieved through a different type of music or a different type of interaction with the music that's being played. So it's, it's not about learning the instrument. People do learn how to play instruments better. Better, but it really is about the child that, that has, a, has a hard time speaking, learning to talk. It's about the soldier who's lost the ability to walk or a traumatic um, brain injury patient that lost the ability to walk that can use percussion to match the rhythms of the drum. So as a downbeat and upbeat and things like that, you can match your steps to the music therapy just as your head right now is bouncing to mine. See, we can get kind of a thing going on. Um, thank you, Maria Hancock, for that tip, by the way. It's a music therapist in Rochester that taught me that. But... Um, no, it, it, it's, it, it enables you to 
use music to, to just dig deeper into the individual and, and give them a voice and bring it out in a way that, that, that medicine itself isn't necessarily able to do. Wow. Wow. So I, I, in, in, in hearing you speak, it's clear that you have uh, an interest in research. It's clear that you have an interest in history. I, I want to understand what brought you to music therapy because it, it sounds like this. Uh, what you're saying is that music therapy, this is not a new concept. But let me tell you something. It's new for me right now because I have. this is not something I've been exposed to, uh, I, I think, uh, deliberately. Uh, in this way until I've met you. So how did you get interested in this? Where, where is this coming from for you? It's, it's, it's very, um, I appreciate that question. I actually, I knew, I didn't know that you were going to ask that, but for some reason I prepared this conversation to, re to really answer that. And I've given, I've given the very basics of it, but I'll, I'll take it a little bit deeper now and say that, well, first of all, in, in 1991, I think it was 91 or 92, I was reading articles in the Washington Post about uh, this huge uh, um, music therapy convening on Capitol Hill and speaking on the Hill and forming the American Music Therapy Association, which is based in Silver Spring, Maryland, um, mm -hmm. right in our backyard. And um, I just thought the articles were amazing about how many different instruments these people could play and how they were interacting with the, the special needs community and, um, you know, the, the uh, veterans community. And it was just, a, I was like, wow. These, and, and they were getting involved. They, they weren't just, hey, come to my facility. A lot of these people, especially back then, didn't have facilities. So they're going around and just, you know, doing as much as they can. So I just, I was enamored by it. I really yeah. was. I, I thought it was, I thought it was impactful. I thought it was um, entertaining. I thought it was fun, uh, and I really thought it was profound, and I thought that they were on to something that a lot of people weren't aware of. And for me, um, I, I see, and this goes back to the, the foundation of the company and why I named it, you know, I, I see so much in the world, you know, with history, I think there's so much that we can learn from. You know, and as you look and see modern medicine, I mean, they were using leeches two, three hundred, four hundred years ago, you know, to, to, to just simple um, uh, diseases or, or simple bacteria and things like that. I mean, we only in the last, you know, 100 years or so are, are just learning to wash our hands and use antiseptics and penicillin and these sort of things. So it's not it, it's not like we have these, you know, we were doing x-rays in the Revolutionary War. I mean, the war and all of that, even war today, it's not advanced medicine. They, 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 they have to resort back to battlefield techniques from the Civil War a lot of the time in, in situations. So we're not dealing, we're, we're not as space age or new age as we, we love to think of ourselves as. So music therapy has sort of been here the whole time. And that's why we say it's, it's not new. Um, I don't want to present it like, oh my gosh, here's this groundbreaking medicine that's just come out in the you know, last two years. Um, it's being made aware of in the last two, two, uh, two years, but it's here and it's always been here. And we know it because our hearts beat that, that rhythm. Our, our central nervous systems beat that Morse code. The, our breath as we breathe, our heads as we nod, our conversations as we go back and forth right here, there's all a rhythm to it. And all of that's been available to us just as our voices and our hand movements and our ability to play instruments has always been available to us. We're just now maybe seeing where we might have seen ourselves for so long a lot further into the future than we actually are. And as we see... Um, Economic issues, healthcare issues, uh, prescription drug issues really manifest themselves in negative ways. Uh, uh, the issues related to soldiers coming back from war. Why not look at something very affordable? Singing, dancing, writing, painting, drawing. These things that aren't costing money. I mean, the therapists, their time, like anybody that does a job, is going to be paid for. But we're not talking about added medication programs here. We're not talking about massive tests and, and these contraptions and experiments and stuff. We're talking about one-on-one -on -one connection between a music therapist and their client, and the 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 goals being set forth with the family and that patient to be able to work on a treatment plan that's best for them. You're, you're so talking let, about. Let me let me just if if you don't. Don't mind. I just want, are you suggesting that something as, as simple as, as taking singing classes and 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 drawing and and uh, and and listening to great music, like something as simple as that, which we don't usually wrap our head around as far as or consider that as something that is therapy or uh, medication, something well, as simple as that has has real practical 
benefits? Well, yes, and and I want to answer that on a couple levels. And I'll try not to be so long-winded as I was last time, but I love <laughs> th these questions are fantastic. So I want I'm trying to jump through the screen right now just to answer them, but. Um, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that we can all play guitar and AIDS is going to be cured and cancer will be wiped off the face of the planet. I'm, I'm, I'm not selling that to anybody, and I know that nobody that I've ever talked to or worked with with music therapy would ever you know, mention things like that. What I can say and what I do know and what I have seen and what we've all realized, whether we've acknowledged it or not, is that stress, anxiety, and exhaustion – just as examples, they lead to so many chronic illnesses, chronic diseases, and and just um, mental illness, to, for the lack of a better term, honestly. And what music therapy does is it gets to the root of, of different situations. So whereas medication can cure symptoms, okay, you can't take a pill if you have autism and then just start speaking. That doesn't exist. If you have Down syndrome, you can't you're, if you can't take a pill and all of a sudden not be all of a sudden start communicating with people mm -hmm. around you, start mm -hmm. being coordinated again. That doesn't happen. But with music, you can. And there's no cures wow. for these things. But why? You 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 know what I'm saying? And and there's no cures for these things. And I'm not pretending to say that there are, but the but the medical community as a whole can't say that there is either. Mm -hmm. But there are ways to communicate with these individuals. There's better ways to just, other than putting them in corners and telling them, feeding them drugs and, and putting them in restraints or holding them down or holding them back, there's ways to learn. And it's not perfect. And every day there's new research. That's what's so amazing about music therapy is it's just like, I mean, well, science is so tightly compacted with it, that something new is happening all of the time. And I talk about the benefits of, of the developmentally disabled community or, or, or just um, patients with, with uh, physical ailments, but teenagers and their parents, they have a hard time communicating. Look at our government. They have a hard time communicating. <laughs> Businesses stealing from each other, having a hard... Th this is simple stuff. I, and, and, and I wish I didn't have to talk about it like yeah. we were talking about two children, but honestly... We've got communication problems in this world, and we can't take drugs to, to fix them. We can take drugs to avoid each other and avoid problems, but they're coming back. And the difference between taking a drug, and see, this is the great thing about music therapy. Whether you're intimate with your loved one, you're taking a hardcore narcotic, or you're playing, or you're playing music, the, the chemicals released in the brain are all very similar and almost identical. So it's showing that if we use this in the correct way, we can eliminate, not totally, because I mean, there, there is medication that works for people, but we can, we can again be more responsible towards our financial situation, our healthcare situation, our excess situation, and all of the things that we can do, not through, not through the government apparatuses or all the different people we want to blame, but just ourselves and our daily lives and our simple approaches to this world, we actually can do things and apply things that can make a difference, and if all of us collectively did this in, in a majority type way, it, it could change things. It could really change things. We, we live in a, in a world that's very show and tell, okay? And, and the, the stuff that, you, I mean, what you're sharing with us is so, um, is, is so different from the way we, I think, sort of typically look at the world and perceive our circumstances uh, that for many people, I don't know how to say it, but for many people, it's a hard sell. It's, a hard, it's hard to wrap their head around something as simple as music being a an actual solution to some of these problems um so what is it that you where are you looking to go with your film what 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 solution or what uh what purpose is your film looking to provide in the realm of a sort of communication i can't talk to everybody you can't talk to everybody nobody in this world can talk to everybody Everybody and say you need to believe this, you need to do this, and you should, and so and, and magically the world's going to be healed. That that can't happen because human beings are going to do what they wish to do. Nobody can be convinced of anything until they wish to be to change their mind. And so what I want to do, and what I always do with music therapy, is I want to introduce it to people. I want to facilitate an interaction and a connection that allows them to make the judgment for themselves. I want to sh so so how the and that's exactly where the film comes into play is I want to present something that shows the entire lifespan of an individual. It shows the cross generational 
emotional effects of music therapy. It shows the history of music therapy. It shows the need for music therapy. And ultimately, it shows the long road we still have to go to, to, to get music therapy more involved in our lives on, on a total level. And it, and it gives ways and directions and... Um, not 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 advice because this is stuff we all know, but it but it just gives people uh, a focus and a vehicle to which to go about it. And we really do provide the information and the ways everybody can really go about and make this a more popular and more applicable form of healing in more states and more countries around the world. And, and so the film that that's that's you know and and so that's the the direct use of the film is to try to expand music therapy to more places in the United States and globally. Uh, are, are you profiling uh, sort of specific case studies in, in yeah, the film? Yeah, abso absolutely. And and it's it's hard because there's so many cases. I, I mean, th mm -hmm. th we've got music therapists serving. We've got 5,500 music therapists serving a million people in the U.S. alone. So and and our film is going to be around an hour and a half to two hours. So we can't we can't focus on every one of them. But what we want to do is start that process. I, when I began this, I thought I was going to film a documentary and it was going to be a little one-month tour, some fun, let's show what's going on. And this just exploded. And it's really turned into my life's work. And I, and I believe that we're going to have so many stories and so many different ways of looking at this and so much new information is going to come out that we're going to have to build on this and create mm -hmm. other pieces of work, whether they're documentaries or music videos <coughs> or reports or features, excuse me, um, you know, th these are all opportunities I think we're going to have to explore. So this film specifically, this documentary that we're doing now, we're going to have case studies concerning autism, Alzheimer's, post-traumatic stress syndrome in, in soldiers, and really try to personalize it in ways of bringing you into not only the client's life, but the life of the parents, the life of the music therapist, the battles, the struggles, the the the, the day to day real life of, of everything that's going around, and 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 just try to show the triumph because these are all positive stories, and 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 that's rather than just putting out, hey, feel sorry for these people, and look at music therapy, it needs help. It's helped. It, it's helping itself, and the people that are using it are being helped. We just want more people to be aware of it because the more I talk about it with people, the more people I see becoming involved with it. And and, and that has nothing to do with me. That's their own interaction with music. That's their own um, direct correlation to the subject material. And again, I'm just introducing it to people. And that's really what I hope the film to be is an introduction to music therapy as a whole for, for a whole lot of people. Got it. Got it. Got it. Well, you know, um, education is uh, the, the primary reason why I think anyone sits down to watch a documentary and it's so good to hear that you're 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 cramming education and research and case studies and examples into into this film so that people can really walk away from it feeling like their mind has just expanded in in, in a good sense in the sense of like hey you know Wow, I just learned a whole bunch of cool stuff. Tell me about your shooting schedule. I, I hear it's going to be very ambitious. I mean, you, you said you thought it was going to start off as just sort of a one-month uh, tour shooting schedule. Tell me about sort of where it's evolved to now and why you use the word tour. I've directed a lot of stuff, and I don't, I've, I've never called my shooting schedules tours. So I want to know, like, why are you, where is this coming from and what does this in, entail? <laughs> Well, it's it's come from the tour thing is probably just because I didn't know what else to call it. And I'm a, I'm a former musician that did regional tours, so I was like that that's you know or not former. I'm I'm still a, ba a very bad musician, but um, <laughs> but I did I did go on tours before, so I just I didn't know what else to call it. But but there's a reason I call it. There's a specific reason. Um, the the schedule has grown from yes the one month tour to going to Chicago and back to L A and back to Atlanta and back and New York and all these different places to now really doing a three to four month uh, tour that's going to take us up to the Northeast, into Canada, all the way to the Pacific Northwest and Vancouver. Actually, Michael, where, where are you based right now? Because I don't think we've established that. So oh, I'm, 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 I'm here in just outside of the nation's capital in Northern okay. Virginia. Mm -hmm. I'm right here, and so yeah, so we're gonna go, we're gonna go all the way up over, and over to the Pacific Northwest and down to San Diego, and over through Texas and the Southwest, Midwest, back down to Florida, and then up the South Atlantic coast, and we should hit almost at all 48 contiguous states, and 
the reason we call it a tour and not a shooting schedule or anything like that is because wherever we go, um, it, it's not just about filming. It really is about forming relationships with people we've played. I've I've opened for a band in Illinois, Cloud Gavin, awesome dudes that were just here on tour, and I got to see them when um, they played here in Maryland. But I opened for them. Um, sometimes we play music and busk on the street co corners, and and just you know nobody really gives us money because we're not any good. But we just you know, we play for people, and, and you know, it's just fun. And and we don't film it. And 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 we recorded some music down in down in Austin, um, just just for our own selves. And it, it just is a. Um, it's just an experience now that's evolved to being able to do fundraisers for local charities and different groups, whether they're bands, whether it's a bowling match, whether it's a volleyball game or a bike ride out in uh, Northern California. These are all things that, that we want to embrace with the local charities to try to get those. So we're going to make those a part of our terrorizing experience, a part of our film, and just kind of show how music is connecting, not just through music therapy, but it's connecting um, individuals to their communities, individuals to music therapy organizations, and music education organizations. So the tour itself will be filming, we'll be playing some music, we'll be um, we'll be hosting fundraisers. We'll be making fools of ourselves. We'll be doing Google Hangouts, hopefully with you, Pierre, <laughs> if, if, if we can get something set up. And, um, you know, it, it, it'll just be really kind of a, a traveling circus without all the problems that are associated with the circus. <laughs> okay, very cool. That, that sounds super exciting. Okay, so that clears up the whole, I, the whole tour I, uh, uh, semantics. Okay, we got cool. that situated. Uh, you, you've got some support behind this, right? You, you, there are a lot of people that you've been talking to that are really interested <laughs> in what you're doing with, uh, with this documentary and, and this, and this uh, uh, shedding light onto music therapy for so many people. Could you tell me about uh, one of those institutions? Well, the, what I could, I'm going to quickly tell you about two of them because the, one of the biggest ones and the first one that really helped get um, our name out to a lot of people was Ben Folds, who was kind enough to sit down and talk about the importance of music therapy and music education to us, and so he really helped get our name out there. Now, he's, who who is Ben Folds? Ben Folds is the the lead singer of Ben Folds Five, and they had they were really popular in the late '90s, and they just came out with this amazing album last year. And um, they I think they I think they launched it number one in Billboard top five in Billboard um, okay. when they came out, and and so they and they've got a bunch of hits, and and you know it, he, he's a very smart lyricist, and he's an incredible performer and he just rocks the piano and, and he's based in Nashville and just does a lot of work with um, music therapists and and different organizations that support music education so he he was instrumental in helping us connect to a bunch of different people just fans and people that are interested in, in this type of stuff in general and then you know and and it leads us to all these different connections so just this week I, I I'm sitting there tweeting and then MC Hammer tweets me back and, and it's like <laughs> Hammer, <laughs> MC Hammer. Heard, yeah, Hammer, the the Hammer, and I mean the man, and 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 <laughs> I, I did it, be, and the only reason I and I tweeted him, and I couldn't believe it. He tweeted me back in like two seconds, and and the man is passionate. He's a passionate dude, and it doesn't matter if you're into his music or the whole story or everything that's happened to him, but like whether he's preaching, whether he's singing, whether he's dancing, whether he's talking, he is so invested in the subject matter. It's ridiculous, and it's hard to find people that, that are that engaged and just wanting to talk about something and wanting to just extend that really positive energy and he really does have a ton of positive energy so he started talking about some of the 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 work that he does and the important things about the the disenfranchised single moms of inner cities mm -hmm. and how there's post-traumatic stress syndrome that really is involved with the youth of inner cities and there's not really a voice for them and, and I and I just I, I it you know it it makes me think about these music therapists in inner cities that we've talked to and it makes me think about these incredible artists that are in these inner cities that have these voices and you hear so many you know and the people that are successful they talk about oh people tried to suffocate me but I was stronger and I'm and you start thinking about okay you were stronger but what about the thousands of people that, that weren't you know maybe art therapy music therapy dance therapy all three things that do exist maybe those could have really helped those people that that weren't going to be big-time entertainers but at least had the capacity 
and and the knowledge and the ability to get out of the situations that they were in, mm-hmm. and and so I, I really connected with what he was saying. I, I uh, you know we we talked a little bit back and forth, and, and hopefully we can keep the conversation rolling. I emailed him. He told me to email him. So Hammer, if you're listening, please please get back to me, man. I'd love to uh, I'd love to get you involved with this this documentary because you're a cool dude. <laughs> That's fantastic. Tell me, tell me more about uh, your partnership with Music Therapy. Um, well, we just formed this amazing partnership with this group, um, and the press release came out this week um, of top-level music therapists from around the country. And what this means is, is that music therapists themselves will be a part of the direction and the content and the presentation of the of the scientific material and the the. Uh, presentation of the clients and how the interactions go about so that we get the story right so the information is correct so we're not out there and two weeks after the film comes out you know there's 300 people well hopefully 3 million people but maybe be just 300 people that tweet, you know, well, it was this percentage, it was that percentage. We really want to get our facts right. We want to get the story right because the momentum's there for it. You know, the, the momentum is really there, and to do it right is the most important thing. And and this field of music therapy has, has really battled a long time for, a vo- for its own voice, for legitimacy, for just being understood. They're not just sound healers. They're not just people that play instruments to make people feel good or teach people instruments. These are people that are practicing medicine, that are using it to create a musical environment that enables a person to become themselves, to, 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 to the, the very basics of life. I mean, breathing, even even with patients, uh, NICU units and, and young babies and, and different and soldiers coming back that have breathing issues, singing and breath control, it all goes into it. So, um, so these music therapists lend the credibility and the expertise to be able to have this film be shown in the true light that it is, I believe, destined to be shown in. Wow. Wow. T- tell me, uh, when it comes to post-production, mm-hmm. um, and, and that's, a, that's a big part of the filmmaking process, I'm really curious about what direction you're uh, thinking or planning on going when it comes to music for the film. Um, what's, what's going on with that? Well, and I want to and, and I want to answer that and and add something on from a little bit earlier because we do our, our our documentary is full of information, full of science, and just all sorts of amazing interactions with music mm-hmm. and people healing and, and inspiration. It's also fun. We're also going to have a lot of animation and a lot of different um, a lot of different ways to communicate visually, audially. Um, and and then hopefully spiritually in a sense of being able to and, and I say spiritually in a sense of having people be able to make judgments on their own and 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 come up with ideas in their own head so they have a specific way of understanding it for them and and so I wanna I wanna really I wanna hammer home the point that we're gonna add so when we're talking about music therapy we want to show what's going on in the brain we want to show people what's happening to the body we want people to really be able to grasp this and understand it it's not we're not selling anything to anybody. Mm-hmm. there's nothing to sell mm-hmm. it's it's not it's it's a medicine that's being practiced and, and so many people are being healed. We just want people to understand it. And so when the music's involved with it, um, from a post-production standpoint, it's the most important thing with the documentary. Um, we're going to take our time with it. That's number one. Um, we've got a composer, Jeremy Robinson, who does great work out in California, who works on a lot of original material. Um, I'm actually, and I can't get too specific about this, but I've got a few people that I'm working with and just started working with right now that um, we're going to come up with some really, we're, we're coming up with some really creative ways of incorporating original music and promotions and the film itself. Um, so we're going we're gonna to be using some, some different independent musicians. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and we're going to be using different genres. And, and that's something that I think I want to really hammer home because we're talking about all cultures here. We're talking about all creeds. We're talking about all walks of life every type of age, every position in life at those ages. And so that's vast. And yeah, well, so that, you- and that's why I, I brought, I was, I was wondering, I was like, you know, because you're covering such a huge topic and it's not a narrative. So well, the it's best not way- like, you know, well, no, no, go ahead, go ahead. No, well, the best way I think in film or anything to incorporate something the best way is to make it a character. And so music itself will be a character, and it will because the characters in the film will be from all of these different backgrounds. And so music will be used in a way to highlight all of 
of these characters and sort of be those characters when those characters aren't on screen or be those people that, that those people can't be as sounds and the music will represent those sounds. Mm -hmm. um, it'll, it'll be there to lead the audience. It'll be there to be led by the audience. There won't be any sound at all. There will be different aspects of music that are used and different genres of music to be used because in our lives it's not always bright every day and it's not always night every day. And that duality itself can lend us to create labels and genres that, you know, it, it, it life's more complicated than that. So yeah. we want to give people shades and not just shades of gray or shades of white, but we want to show the color spectrum in as many different ways as we possibly can through voice, sound, and narration. Okay, very, very cool. Now, you, you've, you've answered, you've given it to me in sort of a, a, a director's a director's vast vision. Um, I'm, I'm going to try and be super specific uh, because as I'm hearing you speak, I'm, I'm curious about your your composer and, and you don't and this, answer this as you feel comfortable because it might be too early but are you encouraging, is your composer looking to sort of go the experimental route with with this or is it like you know, is he like, are we going to like is he like inventing new forms of music composition for this particular film or is it like it, I, this is a good I, 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 I love I love I know I, I love these questions because I've never I've really never been asked these questions before so it, it 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 just allows me to kind of peel the cap off a little bit more and, and just show more of what we're doing and um, you know he the composer is a, is a very old friend of mine we're actually roommates together on the East Coast and he's out in California where he's from and, and he is proficient in um, so many numbers of instruments mm -hmm. and is recorded all over the place and worked with, you know, just incredible, incredibly professional people. He's performed all over the world. Um, he's performed in Carnegie Hall and, and incredible. He is a person without a leash, essentially. And <laughs> that's good. That, that's how I like it. I mean, he's in California. I can't really control him. Um, I'm in charge <laughs> of everything, so I can not release it. But, you know, so, so, and he knows, he know, but he, he knows. He knows that um, I'm, I'm, I listen to music from a feel perspective and not from a I like this band, so whatever they play, I'm going to listen to. I like a lot. There, there's bands that I like. There's songs that I like, but there's, there's moods that I like and there's feelings that I like, and, and I try to stay in those feelings and those moods. It, um, there's also music that, that you, you listen to when you're going through something tough and you listen to it for a certain reason. So what I want um, and what I've talked to with the people that I've worked with is I, I, I want to create feels. I want to create um, – I want to create inspiration for people to think while they're listening to the music. I want to I don't want somebody to just listen to the music. That that's more or less I think the problem with music is that we just listen to it. We're not actually engaged with it. It's not getting us to do anything other than I like this, I don't like it. I'm listening to music my day and and that's you know, really so, profound. That's really well, profound. It, Thank you, and, and and you know, so I, I want I want the music that we create and the music that we select, even even just the bands, even the songs that we play, they're, they're chosen for a specific reason, and I want to elicit. Um, I don't want to elicit false emotions, and I don't want to create a false premise. I want people to be able to react to it in their own way, and so I'm trying to I'm trying to choose music that not necessarily I would like, and and that that just fits to my tastes. There there's obviously some of that'll be in there because some of the bands I like are already in there, but um. You know, I, it's it's more for what what will this music allow your brain to do going through this subject material? What's going to accent what we're trying to talk to you about in a way that's not going to hammer home and you have to remember it, but allow your mind the opportunity and the respect, honestly, to make up its own mind. And mm -hmm. and that and that's really what what we're going for with with all of the music and all of the sounds that we're incorporating with the film. Okay. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. I know. I know that was a sort of an off the wall question. You know, I'm love I'm, it. I'm a director. You're a director, and it's like these are the kinds of challenges that you have when you're coming to, when you're doing a film, and and just getting into your mind a little bit and hearing about okay, well, you know, how are you going to maneuver this? Where are you going with this? You know. So when is this? When is this going to be done? Or when do you think? When do you think it's going to be done? When's the when's the wrap? 
schedule. I know it keeps. I keep. I keep extending it because, and and the good thing is, I keep extending it, but I keep going different places, and other great stuff keeps happening. So at least you know th things are happening, and people mm -hmm. know we're still moving in the right direction. But this tour, this last tour, is going to really be the final one, and we're going to uh, be done between November and December uh, with the actual filming portions of it, and and we're going to do. Uh, we've got a couple surprises coming this summer, so we're not. People aren't going to have to wait so long for the film itself. We've got a real, some really cool, um, web, and I'll just say they're web ideas that that will be launching um, this summer. But um, for the film itself, uh, per, like you said, post production is extremely important, and making sure that the story is correct and that this film is not what I need for terrorizing to make money or anything like. If that was the case, we needed to be done, you know, a year ago when we started so um, this really needs to be done so that the film is the point that we want it to be which is mm -hmm. here's music therapy now make up your own mind and 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 if you do make up your own mind this is what you can do and 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 let's get on board and really do this so I'm hoping hoping upon hope that spring of 2014 our film will be done and we will be ready to present it late spring early summer Okay. Okay. Very, very cool. Well, I, I would like to, you know, keep in contact with you throughout the process. I mean, as you said, possibly doing a hangout when you're on, when you're on tour, <laughs> when you're Absolutely. on production. Um, but uh, also, you know, as you, as you go through the post process and, and uh, even when, when it is, when it is time to wrap, I'd like to, to be there and to continue this conversation and sort of give everybody an update. But for the purpose of where we are right now, where, what is your, your game plan when, when the film is complete, where is it that you, you know, where does this thing have wings, and if so, where is it flying? Well, we're working on those wings right now. Whether it's glue, whether it's whether it's tape, whether it's staples, <laughs> we're, we're getting the feathers and everything. We're we're trying our our, our dangest. We are. Um, the 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 best part of this process is that people want us to show this film in theaters in in their towns and they've already reached out to me and they've already spoken to me about it now that's a lot of confidence in somebody that doesn't have a film so we really have to and and we have to craft something that's going to be you know that, that people are going to be able to sit through um, and again this is why I call it the tour because when I'm finished what I'd like to do is I'd like to go on a third US tour and be able to use local artists to be able to open the show and people that were involved in all of this production with us over the last couple of years and be able to host our Universal Music Care live concert series as the actual on the road um, and go through the whole country and all of the different places that were part of the filming and show it in each and every town that we do. Mm -hmm. And um, through that, you know, uh, we're, we're, it will be going through the websites. I've talked to a few different companies for distribution. Um, you know, as we've talked a little bit, there are some tremendous opportunities, you know, if this film is very good to present it to a lot more people through festivals and things but from a from a from a just a grassroots standpoint um, I'm excited to actually have this shown in theaters uh, to have live music be a part of it and and to take this places and to show people and be there to answer questions be there to engage with the audience and to let people know again this isn't just hey we're coming to your town and leaving this is something we want to build those relationships we want to build those connections and and we want this to be something that that is is creates a, a great opportunity for music therapy to be introduced in all of these towns at the same time. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. This this okay. is this sounds like it's like the tip of the iceberg and that <laughs> it is really uh uh going to explode when it when 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 you when when it's done and it's ready to go and you start showing it off and I want to be a part of that as, as Thank whichever you. way I possibly can. We've got some DC stuff going on here, Pierre, and I really, I, I, you know, I appreciated what we were talking about when we met up, and just all the communication that we've had. And this has been a, I, this has been a fantastic interview. I've really enjoyed my time. So I'll let you know. Obviously, we'll talk, and when things are going on, I'd love to see how we could collaborate and really maybe put something together that that, that kind of showcases all of the things that we're both doing. Perfect, perfect. Hey, I'm down for that. I have Ooh. one final question for yes. you as we sort of bring this home and wrap it up. And that is, now, from what I understand, you're a first-time filmmaker. This is this is your first major documentary. Is that mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so how does it feel to be, you know, there's a lot of people who are intimidated 
uh, with the idea of film. They want to be. They want to make a film. They have the thought, but they're they're intimidated and, and they, they don't know all the answers and and they don't know all the stuff that goes into filmmaking. But here you are. You're doing it, and this is your first one, and you're and you're just having so much success. Could you tell us about um, you know just how you're feeling and 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 how did you get over the the apprehension, if you had any at all, uh, in doing your first film, and and just sort of give me a little insight on that. Maybe you can give some words of encouragement to others. Well, I'm, I'm crazy. I mean, I'm flat out crazy. That's that's first of all. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm I would not. And I I mean, I coached college baseball before doing this, and I always would I always would say to people, you know, man, my advice, you know, be careful because you've got to be a risk taker to want to take my advice. And when I was a college baseball coach, we won a national championship and didn't have a baseball field. Um, mm -hmm. most baseball coaches that take over programs would be intimidated by not having a baseball field or having a baseball program that, that ever had a winning season. Um, we had many winning seasons and we did really well and I just I just didn't care. And my personal belief and this is this this gets more into what the connection is for me and 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 what music therapy is and, and terrorizing and all of that is I believe in sheer willpower. I believe in the fact that you, if you believe in yourself and you believe enough that you can connect with people and you can radiate an energy that people will see and be attracted to that whatever you can't do. And there's so much that I can't do um, that you will find people and you will connect with people that will help you with those things. And if you're listening, if you're always listening and you're willing to take advice and you're willing to try and you're willing to just try something, Thing, completely embarrass yourself, grow your hair out crazy long, or wear a purple jacket, and just go on live cast and do whatever and talk about whatever you want to, and don't care what anybody thinks, don't care what people say, don't care if there's a hundred people that'll comment negatively on this. Just love what you do, believe in it a hundred percent, and just do it, and just love the ever living heck out of it. The most, the most important people in the world, in in our world's history. A lot of them would have were, were called idiots. A lot of them were called dreamers. A lot of them were called a lot of different things. And if a lot of them listened to a lot more people, then there wouldn't be a lot of them. There would be even fewer. And if our if our world had fewer great people in it, man, I don't know where we would be at this point. At least we've had wow, great people. Yeah. And and so I really think that we're so conditioned in this society. We have to have training. We have to have this type of school. We have to have that type of school, this credential, this recommendation, all these different things, which is good in a lot of different areas. But if you believe in something and you have the passion the, and just the energy to do it, you can. And, and there's nothing that can stop you other than yourself. And you can blame every human being. You can blame every parent. You can blame a loved one, all of them. And none None of it matters if you're truly not happy because in the end it's your choice. And and I know it's easy to say, but I'm I'm telling people from this from a perspective. I left home when I was 16. I've lived there have been hard times, there have been bad times, but I have to tell you that all of them for me have been great because they're I'm here and I get to do this and I get to live it every single day. And and for all of the negative that I could ever talk about, it's not worth it because of all the positive that's come from it. And and in that that, it shows me that, that music therapy is possible, that my first film can be as big as I want it to be and as big as, as the people around me that connect to it want to make it. And, and it just means that, that no matter what, I get to do exactly what I want to do every single day of my life, and I love that. Wow. Perfect. Well, you know, those are some serious words of encouragement, and uh, I think – People listening to this uh, or watching this, as the case may be, if you find yourself in 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 in, in shoes where you have an idea and you want to, you really want to move forward on it, but you just you feel you know like like Michael said, like you just really the only thing stopping you is you. And I hope that you follow Michael's story. You 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 engage with Michael and use him as inspiration because if he can do it. If he can do it, and he's just he's just moving just moving right along, so could you. So could really anyone do whatever it is that they that is in their heart to do if they just have the energy and the passion, and the willpower to get it done. Michael, what's your contact information? How can people follow you and sort of stay in tune with what it is? God, is that stay in tune with with <laughs> with with what it is that you are uh, with your journey. 
Well, the main website is www.terra-rising.com, T-E-R-R-A, and that's our main website, and we keep it very updated. I co-host different radio shows. We do speaking engagements. We've got a lot of different stuff going on, so we always update that. Um, our Facebook community is really interactive, www.facebook.com slash Terra, T-E-R-R-A, Rising Records, the full name. Facebook.com slash Terror Rising Records. And then Twitter is buzzing. And I love Twitter because we can give love to everybody else and get other people involved and help other people's projects. So please reach out also on Twitter at Rising Terra, the opposite of it. So Rising T E R R A is my Twitter handle. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. This was an absolutely fantastic live cast. And I cannot wait to get feedback and to hear how, how people are just inspired by your story. And I can't wait to see how you uh, continue to, you know, uh, uh, continue to move forward and progress on this journey. And I want to keep in contact with you and just and see, you know, see, see how this thing develops. So thank you so much for your time, man. All right. This was a real pleasure. Thank you too, Pierre. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk about the project. Always talking with you is fantastic and anytime. If you like what you see and you want to be a part of our ongoing conversation, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you haven't already, please visit our daily blog at www.blue-artists.com.